Hey, good morning. How are you all doing? Welcome to Soaring Solo with Stacy. Soaring Solo is a community of single mothers that are determined to fly above society's expectations by rising above our circumstances and setting an example for our children. So I am so glad to have you here. I hope that you get some value out of this. Today we are going to be talking about what you're instilling in your children. I hope you're being conscious about um, what you're instilling in your children. Oh, hold on. I'm having some issues. Okay, I'm back. Um, if you are not being conscious about what you are instilling in your children, you're doing it still. You're just doing it subconsciously. So is it what you really want them to learn? Um, <laughs> they pick up our bad habits as much as our good habits. So we have to be really conscious of these things. So for the next few weeks, we're going to talk about different things, uh, different categories, I guess would be the way to put it, um, that you instill in your children. We're going to talk about instilling values, instilling manners, instilling social skills. Um, and today we're going to talk about instilling practical skills. So everyday things that they need to know to become a productive member of society. Um, I, I first of all want to talk about um, setting an example. So I kind of touched on that a little bit. What you're doing, your kids are watching, okay? They are paying attention, whether you want them to or not. And they're going to pick up your habits and your skills and whatever you are doing. So maybe this starts with a little personal growth. Maybe you sit down and you go, okay, I'm not so good at this. I need to learn. And you work on you. And then when you work on you and they start to see you improve in these areas and they pick those things up, okay? So set an example. Be conscious about setting an example for your kids and the things that you do. Another thing that I want to mention is explain how and why, okay? So if we're talking about, like, as we go through this, if you're teaching your kids, um, you know, just to, to do the dishes, why do they need to know that, right? Because paper plates can get really expensive. So it's fine for a while, but you might just want to learn how to wash the dishes right and how often you need to do it and all of those sorts of things so that when you become an adult, you're not going, is this normal? I don't know about you, but there are some things that I'm like, do, does everybody do it this way? Right? So don't be afraid to explain. This is why we do this. We don't want the house filthy. We don't want bugs coming in. Okay, so we can wash dishes after our meals. It's a great idea. Uh, things like that. Don't uh, and this is the big thing. Don't expect the school to do all the educating. This is one of my biggest pet peeves. Okay, I'm just going to go on a little bit of a tangent. Bear with me. But when you send your kids to school, don't expect the school to do all the educating of your kids. You are the parent. You educate your kids. Okay. And frankly, and no disrespect to the schools, but they're teaching them stuff that not, might not do them any service in their adulthood, right? Um, and it's not their job to do these things. I, I, I get really um, kind of irritated, I guess is the word. When I see people, they should teach gardening in school. They should teach balancing a checkbook in school. Now, don't get me wrong. If they had time for that, that'd be great, but they don't. And guess what? You're the parent. And you can teach them those things just as much as anything else. And you know what? That's a, those are great practical skills, right? So let's start with those. You know, it's it's summertime. If you're a gardener and you enjoy working in the gardener, get your kid in the in the garden, not in the gardener. Uh, get your kids out there working with you. Teach them how to grow their own food. Teach them how to grow their own plants, flowers right? Teach them what the, those plants and flowers can do. Like we have peppermint growing around our um, bottom steps. First of all, it makes everything smell freaking amazing, which is great when you have a dog. You know what I'm saying? Like anything that can make things smell better. And you know, and what are the benefits of peppermint and how can you use that? Teach your kids that these are great practical things that you can do. Teach your kids how to balance a checkbook. I know that's a, probably a little old school, so maybe you don't balance your checkbook, but hopefully you reconcile your account so you know how much money you have in there. Uh, make Help them to understand that if, if I overdraw my checking account, whether I'm using my debit card or writing a check or whatever, um, the bank's going to charge me. So that $3 thing is going to cost me um, $33 at the end of the month. Not a good thing, right? These are the things that we kind of, I think, take for granted that kids learn, but they don't. Uh, they don't know if we don't tell them. So think about these practical skills. Um, think about cooking. 
get them involved. I, we've talked about this before. When they're younger, it's a lot easier. I get it. When you have teenagers, they don't want to help with anything. Um, there's some co coercion that can go along with that. Just saying. Um, I'm not afraid to bribe. But they need to learn these things. You need to, you know, if, if mama's not there, how are you going to eat? if you can't afford to go out to eat all the time, right? So teach them how to cook and think about the things that this reinforces with your education system, right? If you're teaching your kids to cook, that's reinforcing their math skills. It's reinforcing their reading skills. It's reinforcing their comprehension. They have to follow directions. I'll tell you when I worked at the school, one of the biggest things that blew my mind is how terrible kids are at following simple directions, right? They just don't, they jump to the end. Um, and I shouldn't blame the kids because again, we set the example <laughs> and as adults, we tend to, guilty as charged, we tend to jump to the end and not read through all the directions too. So something like cooking and following a recipe, what an amazing skill to have that reinforces everything that the teachers are doing to teach them math and reading and, and comprehension as well. Right. Um, cleaning around the house. I'm a firm believer that if you live here you help out and I say that and yet my kid leaves a trail of stuff behind him so we are working on that it is not an easy thing that you know keep in mind and I say this all the time I am not coming up from a place of knowing everything by all means so please don't think that <laughs> I have my own challenges this is one of the biggies okay but it is the house doesn't clean itself right and and here's the thing do they know how often they need to change their sheets do they know um what would happen if those clothes stayed on the floor and didn't end up in the laundry basket to get washed could they wash their clothes themselves these are all things that they need to know this creates habits if if um and this is what <sighs> Lord, help me. Pray for me because I need all the help I can get. If you can just get in the habit of taking those dirty clothes and throwing them in the down, our laundry rooms downstairs, throw them downstairs every day, they'll actually get washed. It's crazy how that works in my house, you know, but you have to take that step. When you're done in the shower, hang that towel up so it doesn't get moldy. Those habits are just the beginning of what, <laughs> of what could come. And we want to create good habits in our kids and not just with that when they start with these small habits then they're going to start learning better habits i'm a firm believer like i said in bribery and i'm all for um allowance or commission for chores uh especially if you have teenagers because they want money and they want things all the time well if you want things they come at a cost right there is a work ethic involved and something that i feel like is really missing in our society right now we are so um is so quick to give our kids everything they need and want that we forget to teach them that you don't get things if you don't work for them. And then we end up in a big old mess where nobody wants to do a job. And I'm going to go on another tangent, which I probably shouldn't. So I'm going to leave that there and just let you fill in the blanks. Okay. But it's a really good idea to start even at a young age, find age appropriate chores that kids can help with and go ahead and pay them for it. You know, it, it don't go crazy, but let them know that hard work does have its benefits too. You know, you want things, work for it. That's the key. Okay, I'm going to move on so I don't go on a total tangent there. Um, I was even thinking about car maintenance, okay? Um, and, and we were talking about gender-specific things, but honestly, girls and boys both need to learn how to cook. Girls and boys both need to clean. Girls and boys both need to learn how to maintain your car. Do, do your kids know how to check the oil? I bet my kid doesn't. That's something I probably need to, to do this week, right? Let's check the oil together. Let's, uh, do you know how to pump gas? Um, could you change the oil? I mean, for the love of God, we have YouTube. We ought to be able to, right? Now I go take my car to get the oil changed. But what's to say, you know, especially if you have a kid who is really interested in cars, what's to say you don't go to your mechanic and go, hey, can he just watch you do this and see what you're doing? You know what I mean? Especially as a single mom, there's not a dad in the house to teach him those things. So sometimes you have to get a little creative and sometimes you have to get a little ballsy and just ask people, hey, would you help? Would you help here? He really wants to learn how to do this and I'm not the one to teach him. Okay. Um, do, do they know how to change a tire? Um, all of those things. So th this is something where if you're on the side of the road and your tire goes flat, get those kids out there to help. They might as well learn how to change the tire too. Right. Um, how about just having some fun? Because there's a lot of things, practical skills that come with having fun. Did you realize that? Like, this is my favorite. My favorite part is the fun. 
Um, I love to play board games or video games. I'm not a big video gamer myself, but any games, there are skills involved there. Okay. There's, um, <laughs> if you've ever played Monopoly, let your kid be the banker. It's amazing for their math skills, right? Economics, it totally teaches capitalism, which I love, okay? And you know, how about, oh, okay, one of the uh, games we played in my classroom a lot was apples to apples. So the kids thought they were having a free day. Woohoo, we get to play a game. It was fun. We laughed, we giggled. We have a, had a good time on apples to apples day. But you know what? I, I don't know if you've ever played apples to apples, but you want to talk about synonyms about um learning uh definitions of words and comprehension oh my gosh it's an ela dream that game right um have you ever done mad libs with your kids totally fun and they're finally going to learn the difference between a verb and a noun and an adjective and an adverb okay thank you schoolhouse rock i knew what those were but there's ways to reinforce that. So have a little fun. Don't be afraid to have fun because there's a lot of things that you can learn while you're having fun as well, okay? Uh, movies. We love movies um, in our house. Well, not as much anymore as we did back in the day. My kid's not as into movies as he used to be. But the, he learned a ton of things from movies, like history stuff. I will never forget. Oh, my gosh. Never forget. Um, he was a big fan of night at the museum movies now great movies for just to dabble in history you just get you know that touch of history and enough to get the curiosity going right um so he would watch this movie over and over and over he was about two okay two he was in a cart and in diapers and we were walking through the goodwill one day um he's sitting in the front of my cart and i'm pushing him you know through goodwill and we're just kind of browsing all of the tchotchke and whatever um and they had these i don't know if you remember these i think they were avon from forever years ago um but they were little busts that i think they might have had cologne in them or something i don't know they were they were old um and there was two of them sitting there and we walking past and i didn't even notice them and all of a sudden my two-year-old son goes mom abraham lincoln and teddy roosevelt there was a lady next to us. She whipped her head around like, what the? And sure enough, it was Abraham Lincoln and Teddy Roosevelt busts sitting there. And he recognized who they were at two years old, y'all. Now, I am not super mom, okay? He got that from watching a movie, all right? But who says movies cannot be educational? But those are things that you can build upon, right? So now he recognizes that. He's having fun with that. He gets it. It clicks. And now we can talk about who Teddy Roosevelt was and what he did, who Abraham Lincoln was and what he did. And you can open a whole new uh dialogue and conversation about history it was amazing and if you would have seen this lady's face you would have just died she was just amazed it was i just cracked up at her she's like that is unreal <laughs> so i can't take the credit but it was fun all right you guys i just some things to think about so as you go through your week think about your daily activities and what can you get your kids involved in so they can learn practical skills for life so that they can become productive members of society. And what kind of things do you need to like farm out and say, hey, you're really good at this. Can my kid come watch you do this? Because he's kind of interested in it, right? Don't be afraid to do that. All right, y'all. You may be soaring solo, but you are not tackling motherhood alone. I love you guys. I hope you have a great weekend. If you want to be a part of my group, please, please, Soaring Solo with Stacy, request to join or send me a message and I'll send you a link, okay? Have a fabulous rest of your weekend. Bye-bye.